Is Batman Rise of Sensu underrated? Batman Rise of Sensu is a beat em up developed by Ubisoft and released on all three sixth generation game consoles in 2003. Now, I've previously looked at beat em ups of the 2D variety, with the Streets of Rage series, Batman Returns, and Double Dragon being among my favorites. But I'm fairly certain Batman Rise of Sensu is my first real 3D beat em up. Needless to say, my assessment of the game will be shaped by these older titles. Anyway, the game shares the same universe as the new Batman Adventures cartoon series and is a sequel to Batman Vengeance, which released the year prior. The game was met with mixed reviews. GameSpot gave a positive review score of 7.5 out of 10, stating, If you do enjoy straightforward, no-nonsense action, Rise of Sensu delivers it in an appealing package and is one of the best 3D beat-em-up action games you'll find. Electronic Gaming Monthly was less impressed, scoring the game a 5.5, noting, An unforgiving difficulty level and harsh time limits severely undercut the fun. Finally, Game Informer Magazine came to a similar conclusion, giving the game a 5 out of 10, declaring, It's too bad none of this care and effort went into the actual combat engine, which is a simplistic throwback to 8-bit brawlers like Double Dragon, minus the old school charm. So, is Batman Rise of Sensu really this mediocre? Let's dive in. From the title screen, you can select one of four heroes from the show. Batman and Nightwing represent more powerful characters, while Robin and Batgirl are weaker but move quicker. After this, we see some terrific FMV with an art style reminiscent of the cartoon. A new villain was created for this game, Sin Tzu, and as expected, he wants to take over Gotham City. He accomplishes this by freeing Batman's adversaries from prisons and Arkham Asylum. While Sensu is cool enough, he never ended up being used again in the DC Universe. The gameplay is about what I expect from a 3D beat-em-up, having a limited arsenal of moves and the game requiring you to defeat hordes of enemies before moving on to the next area. What I wasn't expecting was a timer. You have to reach a specific objective before time runs out. In the beginning, this is usually a hostage. Simply attack the designated bad guy and the timer resets. If you fail to reach the objective in time, you lose a life and 15 seconds are added to the timer. When you run out of lives, it's game over. You do have unlimited continues though. A little quirk, however, is that once you reach an objective, time isn't added to the timer. Rather, it resets to a predefined limit. Therefore, your best bet is to keep fighting bad guys until the timer is about to run out. Failure to do this means you're fighting more bad guys than necessary on the next timer. Next, I should talk about the combat. As one would expect from a brawler, there are four main actions, punch, kick, grab, and jump. By themselves, each of these moves is practically useless. Instead, the combat is combo-based. At first, this is simple, with the most effective attacks being punch, 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 or kick, kick, kick. The more complex the combo, the more your combo meter at the top of the screen fills up. Once full, you can unleash some extremely powerful attacks. So, with all that in mind, the way the game plays out is like this. Perform the most complex combos you can achieve to take out bad guys and fill the combo meter. After reaching a checkpoint, clear as many of the remaining bad guys as possible while you still have time left. Finally, when needed, activate your combo meter and dispatch the final bad guy. He usually has a rather large life bar, so using your special moves while the combo meter is activated is the most efficient way to take him down without wasting the precious time needed for the next checkpoint. The timer actually really annoyed me at first, and I kept running out. However, once I got into a rhythm, things really started clicking, and it became a non-issue. After clearing the first set of levels, you'll have the opportunity to purchase some new attacks using a point system as currency. You are graded in how well you fought through the previous level. The better you do, the more points you earn. This feels somewhat arbitrary at first, but seems to reward you for using your combos, taking advantage of stage hazards in addition to being efficient and not getting hit, increasing your hit count. After adding a few new moves to your arsenal, Batman Rise of Sensu starts to become a much deeper game. First, you need to learn the timing of the delayed combos. This dot 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 here means you can't simply mash buttons. Instead, you have to wait a moment before continuing the attack. Mastery of this delay is key to the later stages. Additionally, there are a few moves that stun enemies rather than knock them down, allowing you to chain together some fairly impressive attacks. 
And of course, the more complex the combo, the faster you fill the combo meter, letting you use special moves more frequently, which helps you reach checkpoints before time runs out. I actually found the combat system to be the highlight of Batman Rise of Sin Tzu. While somewhat overwhelming at first, it is simple, rewards you for trying more difficult attacks, and offers enough moves that are strategic in different situations. For example, if there is a horde of enemies, using a grab move is a nice way to knock everyone down so you don't get ganged up on. Another cool use of the grab is to throw enemies off cliffs. Next, sometimes it's beneficial to use quicker attacks for the sake of defense, and use the long combos when you have a clear opening to make sure you are filling the combo meter. Some attacks are also unblockable, which is handy. Now, I don't know where this control scheme originated, but it feels like a nice homage to old school games, while adding a nice layer of depth and evolving the formula. Perhaps it's been done to death, but it's my first experience with it. Between each level are more animated FMVs, with plenty of chatter, doing a nice job giving each boss some personality, and keeps the game moving along from set piece to set piece. You start on the streets of Gotham, but then have to make your way through City Hall to rescue Gordon, for example. The story itself isn't deep or complex, but it is through these cutscenes we learn since Sue is behind the prison and asylum breaks, which helps to explain why Gotham City is absolutely filled with so many people wanting to hurt Batman. Moving on, there are of course bosses. For the most part, these are unique and offer a great challenge. Scarecrow is first. After launching his gas, he becomes invisible. However, if you pay attention closely, you'll see he still leaves a trail in the gas. After attacking the invisible foe, he'll become visible so you can wail on him. Next is Clayface. This is a multi-part boss. First, you have to use your battering to take down the power. Actually, I forgot to mention the battering. This is mapped to the black button, adding a fifth button to the mix. The battering can be used to stun enemies or trigger certain level hazards. This can be upgraded as well, similar to the moves, and later upgrades do damage in addition to stunning enemies. You can even use it to swing across the level. Speaking of buttons, the left trigger also blocks and the right trigger performs a dash. These do complicate the controls a bit, but they all felt like second nature after a while. But back to Clayface, this is where Batman Rise of Sinsu starts to enter frustrating territory, and some of the fun was lost for me. The timing on his swinging blade seems very imprecise. Sometimes I could move back and forth with ease. Other times I would get hit a couple of times before getting off a single battering. Something about it just felt really sloppy, and I was thankful when it was over. Shortly after Clayface, I hit a wall. As I noted earlier, there is almost always a timer forcing you to be quick and efficient. This could be rescuing civilians, reaching a checkpoint, or defeating all of the baddies in an area. Just past the halfway point of the adventure, there is a 75-man brawl, which must be completed in 14 minutes. For those keeping track at home, this is just over 11 seconds per enemy, and there is a lot of walking back and forth from the front of the boat to the back, limiting your attack time even farther. I kept at this for about two hours before giving up. I then recruited a second player, thinking it would go twice as fast with two players. This proved to be incorrect. Enemies experience a lot of knockback, and for whatever reason, tend to stay off the screen longer than necessary. Needless to say, this was fruitless. So, I gave it one final go on my own. I used only combo attacks to quickly fill the combo meter, and then used the special attacks as soon as I possibly could. I even skipped any health drops that were not in my immediate path. I also put a priority on enemies with projectile attacks, making sure I wouldn't lose precious time getting knocked to the ground. Lastly, I used the dash at nearly all times. Dashing into an enemy will stun them, which is key against these big guys that like to grab you. Again, these grab attacks waste a ton of time, and with just 11 seconds an enemy, there really isn't any time to waste. Thankfully, I was able to clear out the horde with moments to spare, but damn, without a doubt this is one of the hardest gaming moments I've had in a while. Sadly, I didn't feel satisfied once it was over, just relieved. The next stage takes place in the Batcave, which is awesome, but this is where my patience ended. You have to stop the enemies from breaking down doors, but I couldn't for the life of me clear it. I eventually gave up. Needless to say, I can see where the critics were coming from. The game is just brutal. I regrettably started over and began playing a new game on the easy mode. 
I wonder how many reviewers from 2003 also made this same decision. So, replaying the game on easy, I then found out what some of those other reviews were talking about. Most of the strategy and depth I mentioned earlier goes out the window. Enemies die quickly with the simplest combos, making the timer a non-issue. The bosses, too, are much easier, and the health bars seem to deplete faster than normal mode. With the challenge removed, Batman Rise of Sensu does become repetitive. Here, the game's four-hour length starts to feel really long, and with the depth removed, you're really just going through the motions, and most of the player engagement is lost. In fact, I never ran out of lives or experienced a game over until the final level, Arkham Asylum. Here, Sinsu's goons unleash magic attacks that really suck. If hit, your movement is reversed. The constant back and forth of normal controls and reversed controls is both annoying and slightly disorienting, and not very fun. In hindsight, I might have been able to use the block move to prevent these, but I didn't think of it while playing. Anyway, after receiving a couple of game overs, I did clear the level. This of course brings us to the final boss. The final fight with Sensu is actually pretty awesome. If you've taken the time to really understand the controls, it can be quite satisfying. First, Sensu dashes across the screen, so you have to dash at him for any chance of landing a hit. He is immune to your block, so you have to dash away from his attacks. Sensu is also immune to normal attacks, so you have to use combos to fill your combo meter, and then use your best charged attacks to finally land damage. After this, you'll have to use your block against his magic. Then recharge your combo meter on some tough foes, and then repeat the process. It's tough, but not impossible, and is a great way to end the adventure. Beating him leads to a brief cutscene with Batman and Gordon having an awkward exchange about honor. You then unlock a making of video, in addition to alternate costumes, and of course, the credits roll. Wrapping things up, I must talk about the graphics. Per usual, I'm playing this on the Xbox, and I have to say, while they don't really push the Xbox to the limits, there is something very pleasing about the overall aesthetic. The color palettes are dark and grungy, like you would expect from Gotham City, but still have some bold pops of color here and there. Areas feel distinct, despite all being dark and open. I even like the little things, like how this boat rocks back and forth. Same goes for the textures. They aren't anything to write home about, but do a nice job making the game feel like a cartoon come to life. The smoke and lighting effects are nice, as are all of the animations. The music, on the other hand, is very good. The opening theme sounds like it's ripped straight from the animated show, which itself like it's ripped straight from the 1989 Batman movie. While later stages do sound more generic, they still feel moody and weighty, again adding to the Gotham feel. So, with all of that out of the way, we've reached our conclusion. Is Batman Rise of Sinsu underrated? I would say no. The game certainly has its high points, such as a deep combat system and great overall presentation, but the game has some serious balance issues. Easy is too easy, while normal is way too hard. Now, I expect a game to be punishing on hard, or even the unlockable Dark Knight mode, but normal mode should be, well, normal, meaning a normal person can beat it. Next, the game is simply too long. Classic beat-em-ups typically last an hour or so, and when you are talking about a simple gameplay concept like punching and kicking, this feels about right. But doing the same basic thing for four freaking hours is a bit much. Granted, you can upgrade your moves, but there isn't enough variety to last the full runtime. Next, I find many of the bosses a bit erratic, sloppy, and tedious. Perhaps this is just my personal preference, but the bosses mostly felt a lot more annoying than they did challenging or clever. There are some nice bonuses for repeat playthroughs, like unlockable art, but these are hardly worth multiple four-hour playthroughs. Still, Batman Rise of Sensu is not a bad game by any stretch, and gets the basics right. But taking the game as a whole, there are enough problems really preventing this from being truly memorable or classic. Ultimately, Batman Rise of Sensu is decent, but not underrated.